So this paper came out uh, mid last year, 2018. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to do a deep sky videos on this. It's called the sausage globular clusters. <laughs> the sausage globular clusters, uh, there's about eight of them that are classed as sausage globular clusters. Four of them are Messier objects. And there was one that we hadn't covered yet, which is M75. It's a globular cluster. There was 400,000 stars in there. So it's pretty big. It's actually the densest globular cluster we know because the majority of stars are actually in that central nucleus. It's about 67,000 light years away or so. And it's actually the other side of the center of the galaxy from us, making it sort of of the globular clusters in the Messier list that are in the Milky Way, it's the furthest from us. But I bet you are still dying to find out why it's a sausage globular cluster. There was a paper that came out in April of last year that was looking at the positions and velocities of stars in the Milky Way, and they found something that they dubbed the Gaia sausage. Gaia is a mission that is basically trying to look at the positions, velocities, and distances of about a billion stars in the Milky Way. It's gonna look at some other stuff as well, but its main mission is stars in the Milky Way because what it wants to do is actually build sort of like a 3D map of the Milky Way. What Gaia will do as well is actually observe all these stars at like 70 times each. And then what you'll be able to do is track their progress around the Milky Way and like model what the parameters are that describe their orbit around the center of the Milky Way. And so you then can get this like 3D map of like a billion stars in the Milky Way, like moving. There's a lot of people that are excited about Gaia data and they had their first release last year. This paper that discovered the Gaia sausage was last year, it was by Bela Karov and collaborators. And so one of the plots that they made was this one, which is kind of messy. What they've plotted here is two different velocities of the stars, okay? They've plotted the radial velocity and what we call the azimuthal velocity. So if we have a normal sort of coordinate system that we're used to, you know, and we see graphs in X position and Y position. Say this is like the center of the Milky Way here, zero, zero, and you have a star over here. Now, in terms of the center of the Milky Way, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to use those that coordinate system. Instead, what we use is spherical polar coordinates. So that star is at a radius are away from the center of the galaxy, and it's at an angle theta on its way around the galaxy. So say this zero is maybe like the line from the sun to the center of the Milky Way, then you can measure that around from the sun. And so what they've measured in this paper is the speed at which the star is going around the center of the galaxy. So that would be the velocity in the theta coordinate. That's your azimuthal velocity. And they've also measured the speed at which it's changing in the R direction, so that would be your velocity in your R dimension. So basically you can think of it as like how fast you're going around something, but then how fast your radius is changing too. So what they've plotted in this paper is that VR against V of theta, but they've plotted it in lots of different panels because what they've done is bin their data in metallicity, which is how much like percentage you have of the sort of heavier elements as opposed to like your hydrogen elements, which kind of gives you an age of the population as well, because think about it, the very first stars that will form will form from like pure hydrogen, and then they'll sort of run out of fuel and they'll have runaway fusion as they die, and then go supernova and throw those elements out. And so the next generation of stars will form with a higher percentage of like oxygen, nitrogen, like all the way up to iron. Um, and so your higher metallicity, then the older your population tends to be. And then also they've plotted it in bins of the height above the plane of the galaxy. So we've got in the plane of the galaxy here. And as you go down this way, you get higher above that plane of the galaxy. And then you've got less metals on this side. And then the more you go across, you get to the more metal rich stars. So older stars, basically. So the thing that they found a sausage in is the plots on this most right hand side in the higher metallicity stars. So you can see in this top panel, you've got two very distinct populations. Okay, one with a lot more stars in, so that's why it's a lot darker in the plot and one with a lot less stars in. This one is the sort of normal galaxy disk, right? Because on your x-axis there, you've got the velocity in the r direction, which if you think about stars going around the center of a galaxy, you don't expect that to change that much. You expect them to stay at the same radius and just go around the center of the galaxy with a speed that is like a, a big speed in your azimuthal direction, your theta velocity. Then you've got the sausage. This is the sausage. <laughs> you see this sort of sausage shape here? And that's where you've actually got barely any velocity really in the azimuthal direction. But then you've got a massive difference in sort of minus 400 to plus 400 
in your radius direction. So these stars in the sausage, they're not orbiting like normal stars like we'd expect, like just around the center of the galaxy. In fact, they're barely, they barely have any velocity around the galaxy, but they have a huge velocity in your R direction. So they're sort of doing this. The fact that they weren't orbiting like normal suggests that those stars didn't actually form in the galaxy itself. It's something we call in situ star formation, sort of in the galaxy, and ex situ star formation, where stars are formed outside of the galaxy and have come in in some sort of merger with the Milky Way. So like another smaller galaxy has come in and all of its stars have been sort of flung at the center and the gravitational forces in that have set them on these crazy orbits where they're just changing their radius all the time, which is kind of cool, right? What you really want to know though is like when that merger happened and like what the kind of stars, you know, how old the stars were and how metal rich, what kind of stars came into the galaxy when that happened, right? And the best way to do that is to look for globular clusters. So hence why they went on a search for sausage globular clusters. The reason that globular clusters are so good at like this probe of like the age and sort of origin of the stars in a galaxy is because you can really easily tell how old the whole population of stars is because they all formed at the same time. So if they all formed at the same time, your hottest and youngest stars will die off first. So your biggest stars will die off first and you'll be left with the much longer lived smaller stars. So if you look for the most massive thing in the cluster, then you'll be able to age your cluster because basically everything that was bigger than that will have already died off. And we know the lifetimes of those stars quite well. And so we can put an age on the cluster to say it formed this long ago. So that's what they did in the Sausage Globular Cluster paper, which is like my favorite paper <laughs> at the minute. They looked at 91 Milky Way globular clusters. And basically what they were doing is looking at the properties of these globular clusters in that velocity space again, and seeing if they were good candidates for being a part of the sausage, basically, in the Gaia data. So here's all 91. And this time they're also plotting in another panel the velocity in the phi direction, this height above the plane. And so they have plotted it and they've shown the area of the sausage that they found in that previous paper in all sort of three plots. And basically what they've said is that these eight globular clusters that they've drawn circles around, the red ones with the circles around, these are all the ones that lie within the sausage in all three of those plots. And so they're really good candidates to be globular clusters as part of the sausage. So then with these globular clusters, they looked at the age and metallicity to see whether they had different properties to the ones that we see in the Milky Way or were similar to other clusters that we'd seen that we know have been accreted um, in merger events into the Milky Way. So here's the plot of age against metallicity for these globular clusters. Here is age of the universe and you see that's in giga years, which is billions of years which is pretty cool. And then we have metallicity here. So this is your Fe over H. So this is your iron to hydrogen ratio. And basically you have low metallicity down here and high metallicity up here, right? And then this is sort of young globular clusters and this is old globular clusters basically. So most Milky Way globular clusters lie on this sort of track here, quite old, all different metallicities because in the Milky Way, you've kind of got mixing of lots of gas and stars. So you don't tend to end up with regions of very distinct metallicity because you're sort of always mixing stuff around. So you get globular clusters forming all sorts of different metallicities at all sorts of different ages. But in a smaller galaxy, like a dwarf galaxy we call them, you don't get as much mixing because there's not as much rotation, like ordered rotation set up like in the Milky Way. So we know from a previous merger that's happened in the Milky Way that there is a group of globular clusters that run along this track here which is from a merger with the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. And you'll see that the globular clusters that they found in the sausage, again, red and circled, they also follow that similar track, but they're slightly offset, according to these authors. So you can tell that they've come from a different source, like a different dwarf galaxy that's merged with the Milky Way. So without these globular clusters, like we wouldn't have been able to do this. So the globular clusters basically give away the sausage's origin. <laughs> look like inside. So you get the date here mm -hmm. and you might do more than one sweep in an evening, usually three or four at least. And you can see here he begins. I saw Venus with a new 10 foot reflector. So he's changed telescopes at this point. Variations in density, that means you're getting variations in pressure. That is sound. That is sound. So there is stuff moving. There is stuff, there is stuff moving. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 